here's a new one. 1991 Ford LTD Country Squire. Just got home with this. Uh, it's a pretty sweet wagon. Wood grain down the sides. It's like a copper color. It's got almost all the options, pretty fully loaded. It's got automatic uh, climate control. Uh, it's got the all electronic radio, which uh, does not work right. And uh, look at that, it has a pretty nasty looking, but leather wrapped nonetheless, uh, steering wheel. And it's got these automatic headlamps, which I think were standard in 91. And uh, it's got these seriously bright map lights. The lower interior. These uh, these denote the LX trim level, the uh, the uh, velour door panels. Now, <laughs> here's one of the reasons the car was cheap. The this door panel is missing. It's taken apart for some reason. Uh, other than the fact that it leaked like crazy through the belt molding in the car wash, everything here seems to work. But uh, the door panel is non-existent. There's the back seat. This car needs a serious cleaning. The old car wash wasn't really enough. And I probably wanna, might wanna get the roof uh, and hood repainted. What impressed me about this car is how much metal there is. Look, got metal door sills here. A pillar trim is metal. Trim up top, that's metal too. Even around the bezel for the seats is metal. This is all metal. Look, even this wood grain, that's metal too. It's got the old school Ford uh, shields, which I guess this was the last car to use those. Oh, I found this in the glove compartment. Uh, electrical and vacuum troubleshooting manual. <laughs> uh, being in a Ford does not surprise me. Um, my family used to have an 88 Mercury Grand Marquis, and um, basically the dome light was the only thing that worked right. Every other electrical thing that could be broken was. And let's see, these are the Ford's uh, unique uh, third row seating system here. And another interesting thing here, put these seats down, the load floor is all metal as well. Pretty neat. I just sort of assumed stuff like this would be plastic by by this point, but I guess they kept it metal. So, and then of course it's got the uh, the electric rear window that goes up and down, pretty neat. And then this handle opens it as a tailgate. And somebody took the door panel apart as well. Although everything in the door panel works except for this lock button is missing. Somebody did some repairs here. <laughs> Must be something back there that's a pain to get to. Now the underside of this car is in excellent shape. All four tires on it are uh, have a lot of tread left on them. And um, the only rust on this car you'll see is right here. And oh well, and right here. Other than that, it's got remarkably little rust. Now, I don't think that the uh, weather stripping is working too well because the door does not seem to seal that great. Now, here's an interesting thing. This uh, wood trim, or this brown trim here, is actually supposed to be wood grain trim, but uh, I think it was like a light oak wood grain film, but as usual, that flaked off. So I guess somebody took it off and painted it uh, like a flat brown, which is sort of starting to fade here and peeling over here. So. Yeah, you can see actually they didn't even remove the film on this part right here. <laughs> so, I may take this stuff off and paint it beige or some light tan color to sort of look like the oak. So, this is one of my favorite Fords.
Oh, it's got the cornering lights. That's right, it's got the alloy wheels. On oh, a pretty cool option here. Check this out. I remember this from the Grand Marquis we used to have. We had an 88. Look at that. Pull the door handle. Now, if the door is unlocked, but if the door was locked, you pull the door handle, so the ring lights up so that you can find the keyhole. I always thought that was pretty cool on the Grand Marquis we had. Now, this has the uh, restyled for 1990 dashboard, which included a standard driver side airbag. Almost looks like they were going to put a passenger side airbag in here at some point. I'm not really sure why, after uh, 10 years, they decided to redo the dashboard for just another two more years. So this is the last year of the uh, Crown Victoria wagon, the last year of this body style. The 1979 body. So look, even under under this uh, the visor is all metal too, under there. <laughs> it's amazing. I just assume they sort of switched stuff back to plastic. Now, everything in this door seems to work, but this has all been dismantled. This is not here, although everything for this door is in the, uh, it's in the back. And it's got a handleless brake. Push on, push off. I just discovered a totally awesome feature about my new Country Squire. Check this out. Parking brake is on. Put the car in gear. Parking brake shuts off. Now here's another reason it was this car was cheap. This odometer does not work. It is stuck right where you see it now. And from what I've read, this is probably a stripped gear. It seems to be kind of common. Um, but I did check to auto check on it. This is a one owner car. And um, the last mileage reading on it was something like 70,000 something in 2005. So if you average out the mileage that they put on per year and then add on another six years, it comes out to about 100,000. So safe to bet that's probably what's on here. Even got the old ornament. It's the uh, multi port injected 5.0. That's the, well, it's 302 cubic inch, it's really 4.9, but Ford calls it the 5.0. Anyway, this, this car runs smooth and quiet, so quiet that when I was taking a couple of corners at low speeds, I thought the engine might have stalled. But the inside of this car on the highway is unbelievably silent. So I was very impressed with that. On the highway, I was actually, at one point on the highway, I was doing, must have been over 90, and I didn't even realize it. So, the suspension probably needs some shocks. Doesn't handle bumps too well, but, I mean, hey, 20 years old and all those, uh, you know, 100,000 miles, I'm sure it's due for shocks. So this motor, 270 horsepower, and, uh, or, excuse me, this motor is 150 horsepower and 270 torque. So I was kind of expecting it not to be that fast of a car, but I was actually impressed. It's, it actually moves out of its own way pretty well. Um, I guess the torque makes a big difference. On my uh, custom cruiser back there, that has um, uh, that has the 5.7. That's 300 foot-pounds of torque. 180 horsepower, so it's not too far off. Anyway, so there. Oh, and check this out. I mean, the little things impress me. Look at this. It tells you the date. Isn't that cool? And an estimate or an elapsed time. Look at that. Fancy. Cruise control. Power everything. It's a 1991 top of the Ford line. Another thing is this engine is like unbelievably silent. You really have to have the, the window open all the way to really, to really even be able to hear it. I can't hear this the engine at all on the, on the road, even with the radio off. I can't hear the, uh, I can't feel or hear the transmission shifting. It's just very impressively smooth for what it is. So there it is. Now that will be replacing my uh, my blue Caprice over there. 
my aunt will be getting that car because uh, she doesn't have a car right now. So, my first wood grained station wagon and first Ford. We've had plenty of Fords in my family, my father's side, but um, well, they've all had a lot of problems. So, <laughs> hopefully, I'll do better with this one. I've